look at 20th century, uh, 124 through 132. All right, 20th century, uh, we talked about the uh, big changes of modern art, and 20th century gets even more uh, change and more strange. Um, all right, let's start with uh, Matisse. There's two ways, uh, and that will be Goldfish number 131. I think Matisse 131 and then Picasso, Lady of Avignon are the two ways to start the 20th century, sticking with that theme of color versus line. Matisse is a color guy. Again, clearly not linear perspective, not naturalism, non-representational color or arbitrary color. He's using color to express. Again, it's flat, it's abstracted, and uh, it's simplified, meaning it, it doesn't look like a real fishbowl. Um, he likes to flatten his work, simplify it, but it's always very pretty, and he's always using color to express, not to imitate. Again, not trying to do a natural um, a naturalism, trying to make pretty, colorful art. Picasso, on the other hand, is going to be a line artist, and he's going to really um, shatter and break convention of the human figure. His Ladies of Avignon is this jarring painting here, and if you look at the form, not naturalism, not idealism, soft, it'll cut your hand. So he really is going to attack the convention of the female figure. Um, his space is flat, but also has some shadows in 3D. It's a very jarring piece. They stare right at you. They don't look like warm Venuses at all. Um, it's psychological. You know, this is, Picasso said, I paint as I think, not as I see. And this is really a, a jarring psychological uh, portrait of prostitutes. And he's really going to break conventions here. This will lead, and he, um, he used uh, African masks, and um, he created this work that really changed things. And again, flat and stylized. Cubism will follow, and the Portuguese is Brock, his partner. Picasso and Brock create cubism. And what cubism does is it, it, it takes the form, shatters it, and puts it back together again. He shatters women almost like glass and puts it back together. He does the same thing with the Portuguese. There's supposed to be a Portuguese guy in here. If you look, you might be able to find him. This is a coffee table. This is a card game. So is there a portrait of a Portuguese in here? Yes, in a cubist way there is. Remember, it's kind of a psychological reality, not a physical reality. And that is cubism. And again, color of Matisse, line of Picasso. All right, Klimt will now go, uh, this is The Kiss by Klimt. And this is a great modern work. And again, not linear perspective not naturalism. It's flat, it's stylized, but it's beautiful. And he has some throwback to the old gold icons of long ago, and he's given us kind of a modern icon of love. And if you just look at the work, it's a beautiful work, and it's clearly not naturalistic. Patterns, uh, this is the linear patterns, this is softer, and again, no space, completely flat, beautiful painting. Then Kandinsky, this guy is big-time artist, Improv 28 Kandinsky. Tanskinsky has a quote. I don't want to mess it up. It's either color is the keyboard, the eye is the hammer, the soul is the piano. Basically, color will move you. He's a color guy. And Improv 28 is like music. The way music hits you and moves you, he's going to do this with color. Improv is recognizable. Like this, you can kind of see a ship in here. He also does some total abstraction stuff that we'll see later. Big idea of Kandinsky, abstraction. Feel the paint like you feel music. Now, Improv 28, there is some recognizable elements because improvs were were abstracted, like you can see a hill and a church here. And he's still referring to the Bible and to the apocalypse and things that are familiar, but he's doing it in a very, very new way. Clearly a color guy taking color to the max. All right, now just some sculpture of the time, going back in time. Burgers of Kalai, 1885, Rodin. He was a very famous sculptor, the thinker and, and walking man. And, and, and he's not, you know, it's not Dory Foros. He's expressing walking here. Burgers of Kalai is very famous because it's a war monument, but like no other. When you look at it, their body expresses their mood. 
and it's a true story about people that were going to sacrifice, and they're not heroic and macho about it. They are suffering, and they are miserable. And this was a low pedestal for a war mem uh, memorial, and, and the, the town hated it. Kali couldn't stand it. They wanted a good old Roman war memorial, like Column of Trajan, but this is an incredible work by Rodin, and he's a modern artist in the sense that he expresses the feeling of the work. He stylizes the work. Their arms are low because their mood is low. Incredible artist. He will uh, inspire Brancusi, who will come later, and Brancusi wanted to paint the essence of something, not the reality of it. What does that mean? He felt there was an inner truth that the artist could simplify and discover, and this is called The Kiss. And it's a very simple work, but it's a powerful work. And he thought primitive art was great. It kept it real. It wasn't phony. This is a kiss, according to Brancusi, modern artist. And he, um, he did, that's, uh, that's a baby crying. Uh, what's that? That's a bird. Um, and what's he up to here? He just felt that deep, deep down, the artist needed to find the true, essential, simple quality. And you see it here in this uh, very this work, The Kiss. All right, a little bit of photography. There is uh, the steerage. And with this one, this is about immigrants, but it's really about form. So it's about, remember, photography kind of looks like art. This is like modern art, shapes the hat. And this is really about form, much in the way like Cezanne or Picasso was into form. The form is uh, the emphasis here. Modern architects, one building, building by Sullivan, the skyscraper, Carsey, Peary, and Scott building, a modern building. And basically, Sullivan was uh, influential in the skyscraper, which required elevator, steel frame, and expensive real estate. And he had an expression, form follows function. What does that mean? Uh, in a building, the outside should look like the inside. Form follows functions with flip-flops. What does this mean here? Down here, stores in here, offices. The exterior reflects the interior. And this was a store, so it goes on a city block in Chicago. So down here would be the store on the corner, and up here would be the offices. But this is very influential. It's a skyscraper, and it's got a very modern look. I mean, if you look at it, uh, very different than, say, a Gothic cathedral. That's one of our first skyscrapers. We'll see more coming soon.